Hey there folks. So in this video, we're going to look at something called bounds and extents that exist for our points within PCG. So what I've got here, I've got a PCG volume that I've created. And right now what it's doing is it's getting the landscape data and then I'm using a surface sampler to sample that landscape surface and create points along it. Each of those having an extent of 100 by 100 by 100. So what you can see is obviously as I change that extents value, all of these cubes are going to get bigger. So here, if I change them all to 200, they're now all 200 cubed. If we go to 100, and obviously they'll go back to what they used to be. Now that's useful because obviously that's being used for the distance and everything when we look at the looseness and how many points per square meter can be fitted into here. But what about if I wanna take this a little bit further and think about meshes of different sizes. So over here, I've just taken some rocks that exist in this Sinti Alpine mountain kind of pack. And I'm looking at these different points here and thinking, well, if I was to spawn these points in, this one over here is probably going to work OK at a range of 100, 100, 100. This one here is probably pushing it a little bit, but we can get away with maybe fitting it in. But this one over here definitely wouldn't work because it's obviously not that 100, 100, 100 in terms of its size and its bounds. So I want to start having a look at how I can take these points and within this one kind of spawner sampler that I've got here, how can I take it and resize it based on different sizes of meshes? Now, there is advanced things you can do where you create your own subgraph. You get the actual size of the mesh and you use that to determine the bounds based on the dynamic element of the mesh. But what we're going to look at is we're going to look at these two nodes over here, the bounds modifier and the extents modifier. They're going to give you lots of kind of... Um, Additional tools that you can use for resizing your points as you go along your functionality. So what we're going to do, we're just going to explain how all this is working and then we'll go through each of these nodes and we'll see what each one of them does. OK, so at the end of this, I've got two static mesh spawners. And what we've got is we've got this one here, which is spawning the large rocks. So you can see over here, there's lots of large rocks being spawned. And this one on the bottom, this is just so I can spawn all these small rocks. So I'm just going to keep both of those disabled just for now, because we're going to mess around with just the point elements. And what I'm doing is I'm using lots of stuff that we've seen in other videos so far. So in my density filter at the start, I'm just taking only the top 8% of points. If I was to stop debugging this and just look at this one, you can see I'm just taking the points that are pretty much near black, the very dark gray ones. I'm then using a normal to density um, pin to look at these and actually map the ones that I've just filtered out based on their normal. So based on the angle of the surface that they're on. So you can see some of them that are on too high of, or too steep of an angle are obviously um, going black. And then I use this next density filter just to take those ones out. That's not necessary, but it just find it's quite useful with this mesh where it's got quite a wide bottom here. If I was to leave it without that, I might end up with some of these kind of triangular bits sticking out. So I'm trying to just avoid that. And I'm using the normal to density just to remove it from any steep slopes. OK, so now I've got these individual points and we come to this point here where we've got this bounds modifier. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete the connections to these for now. And I'm going to bypass that to my transform points. And let's debug that transform points. So you can see that the transform points, it's just rotating each of those points around a little bit of an angle on them, a little bit of rescaling. And then that goes into right at the end, this um, resizer or sorry, static mesh spawner. Now, the problem I've got is what if I want to use these static meshes? What if I want to use these points for removing something else? What about if I want to use the size of these rocks using maybe a difference node to um, remove the grass that's around it or remove trees? Well, at the moment, if we have a look at these points, they're only actually this big. Compare that to the mesh and just watch the size of the mesh in comparison to the point. Now, obviously, that's very useful to have some kind of dynamic mesh creator. But let's have a look at what these extents modifier and bounds modifiers here are doing. OK, so the extents modifier, let's start with that one. I'm going to plug it in and you can actually just find these very easily. If I type in extent, we've got extents modifier. And if I type in bounds, we've got the bounds modifier. Let's start with the extents. And if I plug this one in, and go along, you'll see that straight away, all of my points have actually got much, much bigger. And the reason for that is because in this extents modifier, I've changed these values here to 500, 290, 650. 
if you were to add a default extends modifier and to plug that one in, let's just plug this one in instead. So we'll go into here first and just bypass this. What you'll see is that all of them disappear. And the reason for that is what we've actually done is we've set the extents to 111. Let's go all the way back to our surface sampler. The point extents we set up at the start were 100 by 100 by 100. So what we're doing here is we're saying rather than it being one meter in size, it's now just one centimeter in size. So we've made that much, much smaller. If I go back and just set these back to 100 and go all the way along, what you'll see is it goes back to exactly what it was before. So let's just debug this point and then debug that point. And there's no difference because it's exactly as it was. We're setting the extents, so the size of this, to be the same value. Now, if I increase these values, so let's just have a look at this one. This is my X size. Let's just go. I'm going to just add an extra zero onto here just to show you it to the extreme. And you can see that I'm extending and resizing the X value from 100 up to 1000. I can do the exact same over here and I can make it 1000 on the Y. Notice I'm doing it on each one of these individually, but it's also worth noting that let's have a look at this box here. If I was to go and have a look at it in terms of its height, so you can see it goes underneath the floor just a little bit. If I was to do it on the Z with 200, can you see how it's pushing up in both directions? So if I was to actually go with 1000 on this one, you can see how it's actually resized down and upwards as well because it's basically pushing that bounds the minimum and maximum bounds so the top edge and the bottom edge it's pushing those away by that extends value of 1000 now yeah 1000 is probably too much so let's jump over to this one and just demo that okay so you can see here this 500 290 650 if i were to go and just turn on this one here you can see that pretty much this resizes and scales to fit this rock so you can you see there obviously it fits around i could go wider if i wanted to get this little bit here sticking out but i'm going to leave it just as it is but again look at the height value the z value there as i'm changing to get to 650 650 fits the vertical height but it also pushes it down 650 down below. So think of this extents value here as actually half of the um, the size of it. So it's 650 up and 650 down. We've got one value for each of those. OK, so I've just jumped back a little bit and I'm debugging now at this density filter. So obviously this is rescaling it back to what was the 100, 100, 100. I do have the extends modifier here still plugged in. So if I was to debug that, you can see obviously it's the 500, 290, etc. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to disconnect this for a moment and I'm going to go and look for a bounds modifier. Now. If I add this bounds modifier in, what you'll see is we have a minimum and a maximum value. And right now, what we're doing is we're actually going to scale by these minimum and maximum values. So here, if I was to take in this and just plug it into there and rather than debugging this one, let's debug this one. We'll see there's absolutely no change. And the reason for that is because obviously we are multiplying when we're scaling, we're multiplying the X value by one. Well, if it's 100 and it's multiplied by one, it's still going to be 100. So we're not going to see any difference here if we were to multiply by one. But if I was to multiply by two, we'll see it start moving. Now here, when you see it start moving, what we'll notice is it's actually moving only in the one direction. Yeah. So as I push it out there on the bounds minimum, I'm pushing it only out to this left hand side. The bounds maximum is the other side. So if I go here and go five on that side, you can see it stays where it was on the left and now it's pushing it out on here. So what I can do with the bounds modifier is I can actually modify the left hand side and the right hand side, the forward and the back with the top and the bottom of this each individually. So I'm taking that 100 and I'm modifying it and saying, OK, it's maybe two on this side, but actually it needs to push out further on the other side here. And this is useful if you've got, you know, some kind of unusual pivot on your mesh or maybe your mesh is like this one here where it's actually quite thin. We noticed when we did the extents modifier that having the extents modifier and resizing it vertically in terms of the Z, if we put in 650, it would push it all the way up, but also all the way down. 
Okay, so I'm just going to delete this bounds modifier default and I'm going to plug in this one that I've already modified. And what you'll notice here is that this is going to be a much closer fit to the actual points that we've already done. So if I was to um, actually debug along here, rather than the bounds modifier, I'll just debug to where I've transformed them. And you can see that these match up much closer to what we've been doing. And if I was to just have a look at this one and go back to the bounds modifier, think of it as the scale modifier. So five, I'm multiplying the 100 by five. If I was to go along and resize this, you can see I'm extending it out. I'm resizing it there, but not on this direction. Rescale it on this side and I'm pushing it out this way, but not on the other direction. Now, obviously, if I set these as five and five, it would be the same as me having the extends modifier and setting them to 500. But if I go along here and go on these individually, I can say, you know, this one side is 2.9, so 290, but this other side is 280. This one here, I've resized to 0 0.8. And that's because if I go and have a look at this underneath the world, so let's just try and get under a hill to see this. If I was to leave this at zero, I would see a little bit of this still sticking out. I've increased it by 0 0.8 or about one and that's pushed it down, but I've gone with 6.5, so 650 going up. And that's allowed me to do what this one was doing, but not have it go through the, the floor, going really far down there. Okay, so what else am I doing here? If I was to just take this away and actually spawn the rest of the ground stuff, I'm now taking these top points, all of these ones we've been using for the large rocks, and I'm using those as a difference to remove them from any of the small rocks. So I'm just scattering these smaller rocks and these small rocks, I have no problem with these. They're all pretty much the exact same size. So I filter out as many of them as I want. I can have more or less of them here, depending on what I put in. So if I go 0 0.2, I can have loads of them. So I'm just filtering them out. I'm giving them a bit of a modification with transform points, removing the large rocks from them and then spawning my small ones. But if I was to just take off these two static mesh spawners and just debug these individual points, you'll see how taking those original 100, 100, hundreds, I've got the existing ones and then I've got my larger ones that have obviously been modified. Now, there's one more thing that I just want to show you with this, and that's what happens if we make changes further back on our actual um, kind of chain of PCG nodes here. OK, so I'm just going to turn these ones off. And if I go over to this bounds modifier and just show you this, we're going to just remind ourselves that this bounds modifier is scaling. So it's taking the base extents, the extents that are coming in all through these nodes, and it's using the scale as a modifier to multiply it. So whatever was 100 is now 500 or 290 or going down to 80. That means that if I go back to this surface sampler and I decide I want to rescale and resize these points. So let's say I make this 200 then obviously it's going to move things around because you know it's using all the looseness values and pushing them around but if i was to you know, let's go with something a bit more extreme if i was to make this 500 you can see how this is actually making this much much larger and that's because it's taking that 500 value and multiplying it by five so i'm actually getting something that's 2500 yeah so if i go with 500 on here same thing again i'm getting these massive points because all of these values, these um, extent values that are coming along are being multiplied and rescaled. Now, let's just change this just for one moment and go along here. And instead of the bounds modifier, I'm going to use my extents modifier and we'll just have a look at that one. Now, the extents modifier, notice it's set. We can go in here and we can use it as a multiply so we can get it to work kind of how the bounds are. But if we use it as set, and we go over here and change these, you can see I'm going from 100 and rescaling up to 500. If I was to change this and go, no, I don't want this to be 100. I want these to be 1000 and I want them to be 1000 here. Now, I'm not going to see anything, maybe, you know, depending on the seed that I've got. But you can see there is one of them left there. That's brilliant. And it hasn't changed its size. It's still the same. That's because this extents modifier, when it sets, it's basically overriding that extent value. It's changing it and saying this is the size that it actually needs to be. OK, so useful things to do. And as we work along in other kind of PCG um, 
processes that we're going to have we might find that we use these every now and again just to take some of these points and say yes i want to sample them out and i might sample them out at a certain value like you know 100 100 100 but then further along i might need to take them and rescale them or resize them i might need to override and there's obviously very useful kind of processes we can do here by um, actually looking at the static meshes and getting these to match up to that static mesh which is going to make it easier for doing things like difference nodes for doing self pruning and just making sure that we know how big something actually is thanks for watching folks if you enjoyed this video then please consider subscribing to access more of my unreal engine content